math and reading growth and issues that kind of that we saw from those scores not hitting the growth that we were kind of really hoping for. Uh, ultimate focus uh, after analyzing that was just looking at leveled instruction and then kind of student-centered, student-led learning, and then improving the way we conduct test reviews, uh, really with a hard focus on that student-led learning. So uh, could you reiterate a little bit about what our goal is with this new student-led approach? So one of our struggles is to help both our low-performing students and high-performing students show growth. So it's harder, hardest to meet those high-performing students to push them even, even farther. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways we're working on that um, is to implement student-led learning into the classroom. So our high-performing students are developing lessons and test reviews for the other students. So high-performing students are working together with those other high-performing students to develop questions and ways to teach the information to the other students and then they're working with small groups of learners in the classroom and doing workshops to help them that they've created and so it's pushing our higher performing students to have to develop the questions but it's also giving our other students in the classroom another look at the information in a different way yeah awesome um are the teachers responding well to like kind of giving that freedom to the students? Um, I think with the use of like templates and question strategies, so we've been able to show them some, you know, questions that they can, question stems that they can give to the students to use. Yeah. And once you see that the students can do it, it's easy and it's kind of gives the teachers a break because they're developing questions for you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I mean, that, that kind of hits that level of instruction, too. So you've got these students working together, right? We've, we've got the lower performing. Um, they're kind of focusing on, like, vocab when we should, like, we're trying to build them up. The thing that we've learned, though, and, you know, a lot of research is that students pretty much learn better from their peers, right? So I could say something and a student could say the same thing, and they're going to hear better from their peer anyway. Um, so... Hopefully this means that we can also get them more engaged and more active in their learning since it's going to be less of us talking and more of them kind of doing. Um, so that's good because kind of looking at the data from the last couple of years, we've got the formative data and the math data. And what we've noticed is that the math data didn't really, or the formative data didn't really show or predict how well the students would do on the math. So one, are our assessments aligned? Um, that, that was a, kind of a question that we had to answer, and it didn't seem like it was, that's why we kind of developed that data dashboard. Once we got through that dashboard, now we're having those students do it, and or students make those TEKS-based questions and teach each other. Uh, just from last year's mid-year mid to this year's mid-year growth, reading has seen an 8% growth, math saw, a 10% growth and science has seen a 7% growth just at the same time, different year, but using that student led learning, I think. And so we're seeing that huge growth. Uh, we introduced these data points. Um, do you think facilitators were receptive to um, the less than average data that they first saw um, sh showing that lack of growth? I think. Um... During the professional development, when we started talking about data, like a lot of teachers are accustomed to, like, we focus so much on how do we grow, how do we look like our kids, but when we showed them kind of like on a whole what this looks like campus-wide, I think that, that data was a little bit like almost like a blind side for them because we don't, we've always spent so much time focusing on our kids, you know, that whole like, wow, we can really see a change in that difference now. Um, so seeing that, like we, when we talked about um, when we started this PD and we started this process, we had some of those teachers that were a little bit hesitant to jump on that student-led, but I think now that they've seen that and that follow-up PD, like we have more willingness because they can see like in theirs, personal data, it's not changing much. Like they, they're good where they're at, but when you look at that as a whole and I see your success with it and what you're doing and how much better your kids are growing and doing than mine, like yeah. I'm more, except it's easier for me to jump on board with that. Absolutely. So. Yeah, I sent out um, a feedback form after that PD session, and a lot, if not the vast majority of teachers are, are buying into the process. 
All right, so good afternoon. Um, so yesterday I shared the agenda with you. Um, just so I wanted to talk today about kind of what we've done, how the committee's been made, um, and see what we can do to make this better for next year. Um, so right now, just kind of this, the meeting for this is to reflect on our approach, um, starting with feedback, right? So our feedback member sent out a form, um, went over concerns, ideas, and just some additional feedback for what the teachers think we should do next year. So do you wanna start with that? Yeah, um, so in the form, we um, asked um, just a couple of different questions. Some of the feedback that we got was that 84% of the facilitators appreciated that student-centered learning PD, um, along with the additional like guidance and stipends that we did for, P for PLCs and stuff like that. The other 16% kind of felt like we were micromanaging. Maybe they already knew how to do it, and they felt like we were you know, stepping in um, and just didn't really want to change how they were doing things. They just wanted to keep it their way. Um, something else we asked is how they felt um, as far as was student-centered instruction helping the students. We got 96% believe that it does help the students, that the student-centered instruction has helped students. And uh, that's, that's good, that's kind of what we yeah. want, that's a nice high number. So 100% of our facilitators believe that the library, the Google Resource Library, was an effective tool for them, so that they liked kind of just having resources to go to, that kind of made it a little bit more effective. And then 66% of our facilitators still believe planning for student-centered learning is just overwhelming, all the, the possibilities that they could have with student-centered learning. Yeah, no, I, that makes sense. Um, so going back to that first one where you said 16% felt micromanaged, um, but it looks like most, the majority of them, because we go to 96, felt like uh, student-centered structure was helping the students. So I think you're kind of spot on with that. 84% um, appreciated the PD, mm -hmm. but 96% agree with the PD kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but okay, so uh, yeah, maybe we can look at into whenever we do the PD again, because we, we know we're going to just mm -hmm. based on the data that's coming out with, with how the classes are going, maybe look at how that PD is being delivered. Mm -hmm. So that, because I mean, if 16% are being saying they feel micromanaged, or you know, we want to prevent them from shutting down during the PD yeah. or not paying attention because, you know, even if they feel like they know it all, um, there's probably still something there to learn from. So yeah. that could be on us to figure out how we can deliver that better so that they don't feel that way. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's actually really good data. 100% love the resource library. That's good. That yeah. hopefully means that 100% are using, using it. <laughs> the resource library. Um, and 96% believe that students, you said, believe that 96 is, it's helping the students. Yes. Uh, Keeping it centered on the student helps. Yeah. Um, that's good. So that hopefully means that, you know, the student-centered learning, those students are, um, collaborating with their peers, working through those things, kind of like what we want them to do at our school. Um, so I feel just on that data that, you know, for the majority of the teachers feel supported and the students are, or the st teachers feel like the students are enjoying their classrooms mm -hmm. or at least the content that they're learning. Um, I feel like as a committee putting this together with those numbers we did a pretty good job yeah obviously for the first time doing this with kind of nothing to fall back on mm -hmm. um, i think that's a huge success uh, making having this vision of a student-centered school and then making that happen um, as far as the 66 percent of the facilitators believing that planning is overwhelming i mean i understand that too because like I felt that way yeah. myself when when we started thinking through our problems and realizing that this could be a so, a solution. It's like, well, that's that feels like it's a lot. Um, so again, maybe just in our messaging or, you know, going back to the resource library. I wonder if that number would be even higher without that library. Mm -hmm. um, just falling back on these ideas that we have for them, but. Um, Again, so now that we've done this, maybe next year that number could be lower because now we have examples. Yeah. Not just not just for science or math or 
for your lay, but like for every subject, because yeah. everyone's been doing this for a few months now. Um, so again, we can go back and look at that and refine for next year's. Yeah. Um, Just clean it up. Student and Center TV. Absolutely. Refinement. Um, so with our group, we had this, we, we looked at all this stuff. We had the, that vision. Okay. So that shared vision, do you, do you think that we were effective in turning our shared vision as a, as a group, as a, as a committee into a shared vision for the school? Um, cause, cause it, it seems like there was a lot of buy-in, but I know I wasn't able to walk around and see every class. So I just, yeah. I just want to know, like, do you think we did that? And, like, how do you think we were successful if we were? Yeah, no, I definitely think that kind of just us starting off small and, you know, trying to put it all together and then sharing that out to the campus, I definitely think that the data, like, looking back supports. Mm -hmm. When we look at the data and we look at all the feedback, that it's effective in creating that shared vision, not just for us as a group of what we'd like to see the campus, but just the whole campus is kind of like, we have that buy-in now. We have that, oh, there's, you know, we've created that spark of interest for them. Um, and then them seeing, you know, like why we did it and then moving into that how we did it has been super helpful because, you know, we, we reach those points where they just don't, like we almost just plateau with them. Like how do we push those kids to the next level because they just kind of want to sit back and here's this, here's this. Um, so figuring out what we want to do and how we're going to do that and our why, of course, always being right back at the kids. I think that they see that. And I think even though we may get pushback from the kids like in class where they're saying, oh, we don't want to do this again. They're talking about it on other, in other classes we hear in the hallway. Like, so we know that shared vision is like getting to the kids. We know it's getting to the other teachers. So I think it's slowly rolling out. Even with our data saying that the 16% felt micromanaged within I really think it's just because they don't maybe end up delivery how we did it. Um, but, you know, I think as long as we, as we continue to roll it out as a campus and looking forward to next year, that we make sure we, we are reiterating that like the feedback, timely feedback, like if there's a problem, don't, like don't wait. Don't wait until it's too overwhelming. Ask us in advance, because we've kind of set ourselves up to be the campus experts for this. So making sure we're available, forms regularly and, and things like that so that we can follow up with them uh, oh, is going to help. That's a good note. I'm, I'm going to write that down right now. It's uh, like being more available or being more approachable about these sorts yeah. of things. Just letting everyone know, messaging that. Yeah. The, like the second you feel like you can't handle this or you don't know what to do or you don't know how to do something, yeah. like don't be ashamed or embarrassed to reach out. Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. Cause I mean, we know that with each other. Yeah, as we've our already team. experienced the mistakes, right? yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's kind of like letting them know we've already done all the messing up. Yeah. So when something else comes up, like we didn't plan for that, let's figure it out. And giving them that voice in it helps them feel like they developed that vision for the campus. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think, like you're saying, with the why and the how, the whenever we show the teachers the data, like either in PLC or in a PD or when they're looking at their tests, like. Um, for the math test, like ELA and, and uh, math, they saw that they were five to up to 15% kind of behind where they were compared to um, other comparable schools yeah. and, and that student data. So when they, when the teachers could identify that there was a problem, right, yeah. that, that allows them to kind of understand that something does need to be done. Yeah. Um, so now that there's a team trying to do that thing and working with you, I think that really helped bring in the buy-in um, for, for the teachers, at least for the majority of the teachers, because obviously you can't please 100% of yeah. the people, but um, you can get everyone to participate and um, get those results yeah. as, as we've gotten. Um, no, that's awesome. Um, okay, do you believe as a teacher and being a part of this, committee that you've um, had any professional growth um, working collaboratively like this? Yeah, I think like as a teacher, it's definitely hard to kind of step back sometimes and let go of that control because we've always been taught like it has to come from us, that teaching has to come from us. But I've noticed the more that I've stepped back and let it be that more student-centered, 
but it's freed me up to really focus on kids that need it, to kind of